Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from MechTech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at another one in the Gamma K TK75 lineup. Now, I previously took a look at three of them, the TK75, the TK75 SE, and the TK75, just regular. Um, this one is the TK75 HE, or Hall Effect, or Magnetic. Um, basically, if you haven't heard of them, they're making the rounds right now and kind of replacing, not, not, not replacing, just kind of adding to mechanical keyboards. They still use a mechanical switch, but they use a magnetic field to determine the actual actuation point. So for all intents and purposes, it's the switch just kind of sits in, in the PCB and there is a magnetic field sensor in there so that you can actually set through software where you want the switch to actuate. So if you want it to actuate right at the top at 3.9 millimeters, so as soon as you have pressed a tenth of a millimeter in, it is actuated, you can do that. If you want it to actually actuate numerous times when you press it, you can do that. There's a, a lot of different controls that you have, but it really seems to be more aimed towards gaming. Though I have used some HE keyboards just fine to code. Uh, because a lot of the keyboards I review, I do at least try to run them as a daily driver, if even for only a day or two. But I've had no issues uh, running them. I'm not much of a gamer. I'm coding most of the time. Um, and when I play games, it's like No Man's Sky or uh, games that don't really require fast response time. I'm not playing the you know first-person shooters or anything like that. So um, I don't really... I wouldn't really, uh, I guess you could say, I wouldn't really benefit from having that trigger point um, at a lower spot. I actually prefer the trigger point a little bit lower because I tend to rest my fingers on the keys between lines of code or sections of code or methods or when I'm structuring a database or whatever it may be while I'm thinking and processing things in this CPU before I, you know, translate it and pass it off to that CPU. Anyway, today we're taking a look at the TK75 HE, and um, I gotta say, I, I like what they've done with these keyboards, as they have um, basically taken the body of a very popular 75%, and they repurposed it, truly made a gasket, and I... I, I like them. I think they're they're good. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open up and take a look at what's in the box with the TK75 Hall Effect Edition. So included in the box, along with the keyboard, we have a Gamma K manual, which tells us basically the functionality, the function keys that are pre-programmed already. We have a standard wire switch and keycap puller, and we have a nylon braided USB-A to USB-C cable. And here we are with the Gamma K TK75 HE Hall Effect Edition. And this one is, um, I always forget the name of this colorway or the one they're, they're aiming to, I don't want to say clone or copy, but they're paying homage to, let's say. <laughs> um, but if you guys are taking a look at the keyboard, I'm going to say that you'll probably recognize the design, especially the way the uh, 2.4 gigahertz dongle is pocketed in the back and where the feet are located. You're probably familiar with what this keyboard is originally. So we do have a decent set of keycaps. The legends are nice and thick. Um, they're bigger than some, but not necessarily the biggest. And they are up in the upper left hand corner. Now taking a look below. We can see that we have double shot keycaps, and they do feel like they're PVT. Let's see how. 1.7. Wow, that's got to be the thickest keycaps that I've seen on a stock board. Yeah, I think 1.6 was previously, but 1.7? Wow, <laughs> they did not spare the PVT 
when it came to making these keycaps, that's for sure. All right, and here we have our Hall Effect switch. As you can see, we don't have any pins. We just have a magnet. And basically, that magnetic field will be able to translate any differences in the magnetic field to a position on the switch to where it actually will actuate. And we'll take a look at that. But we have a south-facing PCB, basically, um, without any pins or anything like that. And so uh, we're still going to be able to use the same two caps. We're just not going to be able to use any other switches, the magnetic switches. Uh, taking a look at the stabilizers, it does look like we have, are the newer style stabilizers, but they are completely dry. And here we have, we have an aluminum plate in this situation. I think one of them has a PC plate. Or is it an FR4 plate? I can't even recall at this moment. But here we have an aluminum plate, which is going to be a little bit more firm. Um, but, I mean, this is a sandwich gasket mount. But it's it does have more noticeable flex than the original ones. It's not like, you know, I mean, it's, it's maybe a millimeter, a half a millimeter. It's not really that much. But it is something. I'm honestly surprised these stabilizers are bone dry. Oh. They're not the loosest that I've seen, but they're definitely... The tolerances could be better on them. Now, we do not have the hi-fi layers on this uh, keyboard, and I think that's what's kind of lending to a, a more raw kind of sound, if that's the right term for it. So this is definitely one of those keyboards that I'm going to come back to um, in the near future and see if we can mod it and make it sound good, because I do know there's a couple of the HC boards I'm taking a look at that do have the hi-fi layers and they sound really nice because I mean, it's the same concept. There's just no pins going through them. So it actually would be a lot easier to apply uh, the hi-fi mod with the PET sheet and uh, the um, and the I IXPE foam uh, on top of it. And I think that would really make a difference. Yeah, I don't know if, if there's much foam down here, but there is just a bit of hollowness to the case. But we do have our on and off switch here. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see what it looks like. So we see those south facing PCB LEDs are really quite bright. They're coming through pretty good. Not as much as, say, if it had a PC plate, that would help diffuse the light a little bit more, but I'm still able to see the light just fine, especially because it's south facing, so it's at my angle, but it's not in my eyes. Honestly, if you're looking for an HE keyboard and you like this layout and, you know, maybe even have a, another version of this keyboard, this 80, this something 80 keyboard, um, this HE is honestly... I think uh, comparable, if not a little bit cheaper in price than some of those other ones. And I don't see that they have too much of a difference. The, the software all looks the same. They're using the same uh, magnetic uh, field readers, I believe, from what the little bit of specs that I've seen. So I really think it's just a matter of, you know, they're setting the price in the market depending on what they, you know, want to add to it. I've actually just came across a GitHub project for an HE keyboard. Um, and there's only a couple extra chips that you're adding to the PCB, which really isn't, I mean, it, it adds a little bit more time if obviously you're hand soldering, but um, as far as cost, it doesn't add but a couple dollars more, if that, to the board. Just the specs. Today, we are taking a look at the Gamma K TK75HE. It is a three-mode 
75% polytech keyboard with a knob. It has a sandwich mount of aluminum plate with plate mounted stabilizers, a south facing Polyfect PCB with no support for screw and stabilizers, and minimal dampening. It is preloaded with linear mercury switches as well as double shot PDT OEM keycaps measuring in at 1.7 millimeters in thickness. It has a battery capacity of 4,000 milliamp hours and comes weighing in at 813 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 21.5 millimeters off the typing surface while the back sits at 31, providing for a default typing angle of 6.5 degrees. Flipping the first set of fold-down feet will take the back up to 36 millimeters and change the angle of typing to 9 degrees. Folding down the final set of fold-up feet will take the back height to 42 degrees and change the angle of typing to 11 degrees. This keyboard MSRP starts at $79.99 and goes up from there. It is available on Amazon as well as Gamma K's website. Links below. All right, so we can download the software for this keyboard uh, from Gamma K. They have a kind of all-in-one for the majority of their keyboards. So it's just one, one download, which I really appreciate. So um, that's why when I downloaded it, there's a two because I actually already had it installed. But going through the, the setup process pretty quick. First time driver loads up, it's just basically reading everything and setting everything up. Um, now, as you can see, you have your main layer, which allows you to only control the, the push of the, um, it, it looks like it allow you to do something with a knob, but it doesn't really. Um, you have what's called layers, but those are really profiles. You can change the different top bindings, but not the functions, not on this screen anyway. Uh, under stroke settings, you can see that where the settings are at for the entire keyboard, as you can see the all button switch on, but you can go ahead and set that for every different key. If you wanted to only have certain keys activate um, at certain uh, pressure points. So we already do have programmed uh, sensitivity as well as game and you can customize. Now DKS appears to be where you can set a particular key to to happen at a cert at different points in the actuation. So it's kind of like a macro, I guess. And then we have MT, which a single button achieves two function. This is kind of like tap from what I'm understanding. Then we also have TGL, which is uh, to continue triggering it on or off. So basically like we'll hold and lock that key. So where it just continues to send it as quickly as possible over and over again by just holding the key cap down. So, and we can add it to specific keys. Now under the function settings, we can select for all the keys that are not already colored in, we can go ahead and add the function with this will be what will come out when you combine function and a key. So we basically have one function layer. And if I'm not mistaken, this is how the other ones work as well. So I went ahead and added insert underneath the leap because that's how I like to have mine programmed. Under macros, we have a very simple macro system. You start a new one, um, or add a new one, you start it, start typing what you want. Then you can go back and edit, change the timing, add mouse, and so on and so forth. Then you can go back and bind it to either a top layer or your function layer. Under lighting, we can select our different lighting modes, or we can go into light edit and do per key RGB, as I did here, just playing around. In the about section, it shows us that we, with the red dots next to the update, it appears that there's a new version of the software, although that, even after reloading and installing it, it was the same version that kept showing that it needed to be updated. But the firmware, uh, did require an update, and I did see some changes, so I went ahead and ran that. Um, obviously, make sure that you are plugged in over USB, 
and while flashing firmware, make sure, you know, you're either on a battery backup or using a laptop that has battery, you know, in case power goes out. A firmware update being interrupted in the middle of it will usually break a device. Usually. Not always, but a lot of times it will. That's why you'll see dual bias on a lot of motherboards. They have dual biases because they have a backup bias, basically, in case one gets corrupted. I've seen a lot of these uh, HE keyboards for a couple hundred dollars, uh, much more, and basically being the same or even not as good. Uh, so... When comparing these to the other boards that are in the market, I think that it is price comparable. Though, right now, there's a renaissance in regular mechanical keyboards. So, it's... I think that these... That in order to compete, this is going to have to at least include a little bit more flex or the um, hi-fi layers or a little bit more dampening, a little bit more weight. Uh, there's going to have to be more that can be done, but... That being said, it is comparable to the other AT models in this price range or even pricier. Um, so Yamake is a brand that has been around for a while. I mean, I still pull out my one of my Yamake LK67s all the time because I still enjoy it. I think it's a just a cute little chunky boy. Um, and my daughter also loves hers. She has the aqua blue see-through and has put so many artist and keycaps on it but she uses the thing every day i like always checking the battery and make sure it's not swollen and it's not swollen so knock on wood but um no spicy pillows so they are a brand that you can trust like i said the software it's workable um it could use some mods to sound a lot better but again it is in the same kind of level as other HE keyboards in this layout and feature set that are actually some even priced a little bit more either at this price or more and some over a hundred dollars which I just it's a little too much for me I mean it adds a few more dollars you know and once the design is done I don't see that it's really adding <clears throat> something that could double the price of the keyboard so I think Gamma K has stayed realistic but again, like I said, the hi-fi layers, uh, the, the amount of aluminum keyboards that we have coming out at this um, at this price range, granted not HE, but standard mechanical ones, there's going to have to be, the HE keyboards are going to have to catch up and kind of find their, their fit as far as price range and features go to fit in and be comparable with these other keyboards that are out in the market. I will come back to this one because it's... Uh, there, actually, I've got two videos uh, that I'll be planning. I'm doing a, with this one that I've gotten out of the way, I will be doing a, basically a keyboard list, kind of like a, a tier list video of the HE keyboards that I have reviewed so far and go through them and kind of compare them as much as I can apples to apples. And then I'll come back to it and mod this one. This one will probably be the one, or I might mod a couple of them and see um, how good I can get these HE keyboards sounding because um, like doing the PET mod, we don't have to worry about punching out holes for the pins. And I don't know. I think that um, because they're basically the same, we're just are dealing without pins. I think that we can get some interesting sounds out of it. And I, I'm confident I can make this one sound much better as I've made many other keyboards using this exact same case, let's say sound very good i do hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions comments or suggestions for when i come back to it please let me know down in the comment section below a like a subscribe really does go a long way i want to wish you an awesome day and until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on